Good morning and welcome to this session two of uh, CJ. My name is Bill Miller. I teach in the Natural Sciences Department here at PGCC. And I'm Laura Miller in the Humanities Department. And it's Miller time. I hope you can stop related. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, so we are both members of the uh, Faculty Salary and Benefits Committee. Oh. We are. Um, and we are here to do a, a presentation on full time uh, faculty benefits, yeah. so both information and feedback. Um, and uh, although what we say applies broadly to benefits here uh, for all employees of PGCC, and we hope to get questions from all uh, employees. Um, and yeah, so an overview, we're going to uh, introduce ourselves, uh, uh, the committee that is, we're going to talk about the benefits guide and introduce that, and also introduce Ben on logic, which is uh, how you sort of uh, view your benefits here at PGCC, uh, part about making benefits changes, and then sessions for feedback and questions about your benefits. Um, and yeah, we're doing so. Uh, we are uh, as the faculty salary benefits committee we uh, started meeting in february 2022 we there was an election through the faculty senate um, and uh, our members here uh, and I, I see derek risen is here if you raise your hand uh, and mary dutter if you can raise your hand mary has been uh, kind enough to take notes for our presentation so thank you again mary uh, and Rick. what's that Rick. Rick, oh, Rick, 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 Rick uh, one of our co-chairs and uh, motivational uh, forces throughout this entire process. So thank you, uh, members, and thank you for everybody. So uh, our purposes uh, were put together uh, by the faculty senate. You can see, broadly speaking, we represent faculty uh, full-time and part-time. We are part uh, or related to the faculty senate, so we make recommendations to the faculty senate. Um, and we take, um, uh, you know, uh, we, we serve at the pleasure of the faculty senate, basically. Uh, we make recommendations, they ask us to do stuff, we develop proposals, uh, present those proposals to the faculty senate, which we did for the first time at their meeting at the beginning of October, um, promote uh, approved salary benefit proposals, monitor, um, and uh, before I go into our unofficial purposes that we came up with, we realized this is a huge topic, and we but we want to be a voice for information and change on this campus. And even if change at BGCC happens, what we might say is incrementally, we will be there to continue and move the ball forward. That's how we see our. Uh, that's when we see so many things, and I think the president captured that with. The fact that this is that the change is happening in the system. I think uh, for me, there's an excitement to be part of that. Our unofficial purposes, uh, as we met and as we came up, and as we had difficulty finding some of this information, we said, well, we want to increase transparency uh, with regards to faculty salary and benefits processes and, and processes for all employees at PGCC. And then to also increase faculty and employee benefit uh, or involvement in decision-making things. So these are big decisions. These affect our lives, and we would like to be uh, involved and more involved with these processes. So that's that's sort of what we're working on. And this is one of our first publicly facing events to uh, get feedback and, and put out information on these. And, and here are your questions. So, um, go ahead. <laughs> So in the spring, we sent out a survey to all faculty, hopefully some of you, um, many of you were able to complete that survey. We sent it to full-time as well as part-time faculty. And what we were trying to do is figure out where everybody was at in terms of salary, benefits, uh, access to information that, that you need for your benefits. Um, and we asked the question, do you know what your benefits are and how to access them? 52% of respondents said yes. And 47% said no. So that gave us an indication that it might be helpful to have a session like this. 
And if we have a satisfied R U with your benefits, that I mentioned this in our last session, we had a lot of people that were neutral, which I found interesting. I don't know what that means, but I'd love to explore why some folks are neutral, and that's fine. Um, 15% were unsatisfied, 13% were unsure, just didn't know what their benefits were, where to find them. 20% were satisfied, 7% very satisfied. So this also gave us a little bit of a clearer picture of where everyone was at in terms of satisfaction of benefits. Uh, so, and then the next, so, and there were actually more questions in that survey uh, that were also about salaries. And so we hope to move forward with that direction in a future event. But for now, so um, I'm going to enter the section uh, in which we introduce the benefits guide, which hopefully you've already seen, but if not, um, and uh, Benalogic. And so the employee benefits guide, uh, I know I got a bunch of emails about it during the open enrollment period. I'm uh, there, it lists all the possible benefits. Uh, we're going to highlight the benefits that the college pays towards as part of this presentation. Although our broader scope is to take feedback and questions on all of the PGCC benefits and and find information. We want to be a source of information and um, answer questions for you. Um, now to Benelogic. And uh, how many people uh, have logged into their Benelogic before? How many people have not logged? So you always have to. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, and, all right. So you guys must be teachers because I actually got an almost 100% response. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Yes. Um, uh, this is within mypgcc.edu. You log in, same place where you go for Canvas and uh, and Cornerstone and so many other things. There's a Benelogic, and we can actually go through that process in a few minutes um, if people would like to see it. But once you log in, you click on the box that says Benelogic. It takes you to this screen, and then uh, you can see the different possibilities here. Uh, I'm going to continue my presentation by clicking on Benefit Details. And this is what comes up. And I think it's pretty well organized. It lists what type of benefit, uh, who's supplying it, or whether you've waived it or not, and then the cost breakdown. And what I found was interesting, um, and I've served at a previous school on a, in a similar function. And so I know that while this lists perhaps the cost breakdown for the employee or the faculty member, that the, disc, the, the college pays a significant amount as well. So I was interested in figuring out all of those costs. And the way that I did that was I went into OwlLink, and under OwlLink, there's a, a, a place where you can click on employee. And under that, there's a place where you can click on total compensation. And the total compensation shows not just the employee cost, but also the employer cost, right? Uh, that goes along with each of your benefits. And uh, so, for example, uh, I take uh, the dental and it shows what I uh, pay, and it also shows what PGCC pays. And, uh, I, and I didn't know this at the time, but in discussion with Sabrina and looking around, PGCC pays 80% of the cost of uh, dental, of uh, health, and vision as well, regardless of which benefit. You have. So, and we'll have an analysis later where we compare what PGCC pays to what Montgomery College pays, just to get a broader perspective on that. But for now, um, uh, two benefits, which as employees and as faculty, we pay nothing for, but the college pays 100%. And these are not small costs. Um, for the life insurance and the long-term disability. Um, I uh, don't take medical insurance. I get it through my wife. Um, and uh, I, get, I get Kaiser, but from through her employment, uh, it's about half the monthly cost. So that's why we chose it. Um, anyway, so yep. So there, uh, so just breaking that down, putting these numbers up top here. So for dental, uh, we get the family plan, what I pay, and what the employer pays. And then just uh, next, um, basic life insurance, again, uh, what they're paying, uh, what the college is paying, what I am paying. Uh, I will say, though, I didn't understand about vision insurance. We don't currently take it, but 
uh, I'm thinking about it now because um, it seems, so the employer again pays 80% of it. So I'm learning a lot of this process as well. Uh, so long-term disability, uh, so uh, that is again, a, a pretty expensive benefit that we are paying zero for. And, it, and in my opinion, it's an important benefit. Nobody knows when they're going to come into a long-term disability. And it's of course very much. Now, um, how the college pays for health, dental, and finish, uh, vision benefits, 80% of the cost covered uh, is covered by the college. I mentioned that. That goes for all of these different options. So this uh, was taken, this top uh, table is taken from your benefits guide and it lists all the different costs. And then what I just did for uh, the health benefits for Kaiser and Care First was I broke down single, two people, so employee plus one and family, not only what we're paying, but what the employer, what PGCC is paying as well. And again, so I'm interested in just where, how much does this cost the college and us? Question. So now that the insurance plan has a two, because I remember, I need to look at my stock because I remember two was considered a family years ago. You had one additional child, they considered you a family. So, yeah. Right, no, so that, uh, hopefully we will leave with, you know, we'll, these questions will come up as we as we go through this. But one and a child or one and a spouse is two parties. But if it's three or more, it's a family. Thank you. But when I had my child, my daughter, 22 years ago, Ken first told me that was a family back then. Now, when it comes to deductibles, yes, it takes two people to satisfy deductibles. So when they're talking about deductibles, yes, two is considered a family. Okay. But when we're talking about bi weekly premiums, it's two party or three is a family. Okay. Thank you. And so, oh, thank you. so um, when I turned 26 and they get dropped off on insurance, that for, like for me, I had some kids dropped off and then I'll have some more. So when it gets down to just one kid and me, will that, do I have to do something or does that automatically bring it down to that? Two it automatically three? brings it down to two parties. What happens yeah. if this portal compared to, you know, the old, we had an old portal. This is the new portal. <laughs> this portal was implemented July 1st. And that was one of the reasons why we implemented it, because this one was more robust and it was better for us as an institution to utilize it. But there are emails and flags that come up in this portal that tells us because so many times employees will forget, yeah, you know, your kid will because the insurance is going to drop them. The insurance is going to drop them no matter what. And if we don't get the flag or you don't call us and tell us, we won't know to reduce your premium. Whereas now with this new portal, it communicates with colleagues. So the premiums are going back and forth. So change happens, we get flagged, premium comes over with change. And then we verify on this side. And if there's any type of errors, then we get an error. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You basically answered it, but when you say like single or two, do I count or did like a single person count? If you're single, it's just you. The right, single. single is employed. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I missed, should have used the same names, but two is employed plus one. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the question I had, um, I just started full time this semester. And I guess the confusing part was when it comes to the benefits, in my understanding, um, for like health insurance, it's only, I guess you only pay it. That cost represents like nine to 10 months. Is that okay? Yeah. Or is that so for equity? Equity pay. All of your benefits over 20 pays through the academic year. All faculty benefits, contributions, and deductions are over an academic year, but the coverage carries you through the whole fiscal year. Okay. And then, so that's why if you look at your premium, it's slightly higher than the 26 pays. Okay. But you're covered for the same duration through June 30th. And then July 1, you're not paying any premiums during the summer, okay. but your plan is still active. Okay. So even if you're a fixed term, one semester, and you pay for your benefits throughout the year, you're still going to be covered through the end of June, even if your contract ends in May. 
If you don't return in August, we'll stop your benefits June 30th. Yeah. Um, I was just in the context of like the whole kid coverage thing. Um, I had a huge issue this summer because my dog, I was traveling, my dog was traveling, and she, when she turned 21, she got dropped automatically from benefits. Nobody notified us. Nobody, like we had no, and you guys were amazing because I was freaking out. You know, she didn't find out until she went to the pharmacy to get her medication. And, um, you know, you guys acted really fast and there was a flurry of phone calls and so forth. But just a heads up, like, you don't get told. And, you know, I mean, I looked up online, like, she's covered until she's 26. Like, what's going on? Like, who dropped her? Why have I not been notified? You know? And then, you know, and that's the thing when you're dealing with automation, there is always, it can always be a glitch. Yeah. But that's why we have the access to get her turned yeah. back on. You were out on leave, actually. Yeah. And um, from, I mean, I'm everybody was amazing. You guys were awesome. Get notification from care first. Did you? And then I had to provide proof that my daughter was still in undergrad. They didn't, I do think long I long long and see years ago, that's how you used to do it. Used to be but when they changed it in the list of 26, you didn't even have to have your kids in full time school. Long as they, they could be working right now. Like my kids are just bashing me because they got full time jobs, and I said, uh, You got your own insurance. <laughs> <laughs> you got your own insurance. Yeah. And so save me some money. <laughs> but you don't have to take them off until they turn 26 now without any stipulations. My daughter was dropped at her 20 years and uh, no notifications from him. And I was going in and out with Sabrina and Shara. Mm -hmm. But then, like thank you, she was reinstated. Yes. And we got, uh, she actually went to the doctor and we got a bill like nine, 900 something. <laughs> uh, and uh, she was, she freaked out. Mm -hmm. And, and I tell people to on me and that's my <laughs> To send it back. I had that happen with my mom when she passed. We had just went to the doctors. I like think you were out on leave for that. Mm -hmm. In June. Yeah. And, and the week before. And I get this bill in the mail in July. And we paid $9,000. Like, and then, you know, me being the business person, I was like, <laughs> y'all not getting this. <laughs> I nicely called them. I said, um, and told them everything. It's like, oh, Miss Thomas, we're so sorry. We'll take care of it. But the thing is, why didn't you submit it to the insurance at the time? Right. So sometimes it's for doctors' offices mm -hmm. that don't follow through on things that they need to do. Yeah, and it, it was more difficult because my daughter is in Georgia and I'm not there. Yes. So yeah, my daughter was in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I was at that uh -huh. Yeah, and that's, that's, I think that's a scary thing because when you have kids that are out of state yeah. and you're trying to make sure things are in order. So when you make those phone calls to us, we try not to mess around and everybody's on cue and it knows that when somebody's coverage is canceled, mm -hmm. we get it reinstated. I, I had been through with somebody yesterday. Their stuff didn't carry forward because at the time when they were hired, it was right when we were switching portals. Mm -hmm. And they got their information yeah. because it came from the old portal, but it wasn't in the new portal. No, you guys are amazing. So she called yesterday and I'm like, okay. Don't, don't worry, I, we'll have a show on my watch. And it was over a weekend. You know, yeah. I, I was very grateful. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. It's the end of the month of the 26th birthday. End of the month, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, the month of the 26th of the month. Yeah, like the month of the month. So, um, with me, Okay, so if if I was the admin of my parents, can I add my parents? Okay. Parent? Oh, okay. The only thing the parents can be covered is under flexible spending. If you have adult daycare, you can use your flexible spending account to pay for adult daycare for your parents. That's the only benefit. Oh, and legal resources. Legal resources you can use for a parent. We have a parent rider. Of legal resources as well, but those are the only two benefits that you can utilize for your parent. Otherwise, everything is for you, your spouse, and your children under the age of 10. Flexible spending. Flexible spending is where you put away pre pre tax. Mm -hmm. 
pre-tax contributions <laughs> for medical or dependent care. And that dependent can either be a child under the age of 13 or a adult parent for adult daycare. Does it mean you have, to, you have to use it before the end of the year? Yes. Or you before you do only for the medical, not for dependent care. Oh, okay. There is your right there. Health care is $70. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm curious as well because I've I never really use the FSA until here. I usually have an HSA. Is it possible to teach you guys next for doing that? Possibly to have an HSA option, or is it is there a reason? Population, HSA doesn't work for us okay. because we have a seasoned population here and <laughs> in addition <laughs> to retirees and HSA. Are not beneficial for our population. That's for the young, young population. <laughs> and just before I go on, I would like to thank Sabrina and Gina Bush both for helping me with this presentation. Tell them when he said he was doing a presentation. I said, I have to tell them. <laughs> yeah. I said, because benefits is not something that you can scratch the surface. And there is so much more to it and so much detail and information. And I wanted to just make sure that I supported both of them and supported y'all and make sure that y'all had the information that your questions answered. Thank you. I don't know. This is the time that this is dealing with disability. I don't have children, but I have support to my children. So I can help my mother now. Me and my other mother. But anyway, the question is um, not so much as the health benefits, but you mentioned the long term care. Can you add a rider on for long term lease? Now, that's something I have checked into, and that's something I am considering bringing forth out okay. there. Now, the, the catch with long term care. Well, and actually, we do have a critical care that we offer through AFLAC that is really a long term care. What is it? With AFLAC. Do you realize we offer AFLAC here? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we do offer AFLAC. AFLAC is a critical care program that you can enroll in. And if you're interested, you know, even though it's outside of OPT, that we will definitely put you in touch with the representative. All right, so yeah, I, because I was on the ask, I think that mm -hmm. the long term. Plus, I had experience with my parents, and it definitely helped with the, the bills in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was significant. And what I found out from one of my daughters who works for the federal government, they actually offer. Long-term long -term care yeah, for the parents through federal government. Uh -huh. So my daughter actually picked it up on them. And they because I don't want to be bankrupt later on. Let me get the children trying to take care of Well, that's what my daughter was the government and she was And this is one of the questions we had. Is there a rider to not on this long-term disability, but we do offer that critical care. So you can look at the critical care plan and see. And I can put you in touch with that representative. Okay, so I'm going to just email y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. because I'll be. So that's the only consideration at this time. At this time. Now, I guess mm -hmm. the other question is do you have to have a medical exam that you can consider on some long term care? And see, and all of that, if you don't have to have a medical exam, there's going to be limitations. It's just like anything else. Mm -hmm. You can't use like short term disability. If you enroll with short-term disability now, you cannot enroll with short-term disability and utilize your pregnancy if you're already too much pressure, pregnant, because they consider that as pre-existing. So what they have is they have a clause when you enroll that for certain conditions, you have to wait 10 months. Right. So then that rules out that whole pre-existing condition. Whereas if you break your name and end up on short-term disability, that's something that just happened. So it's clearly not pre-existing. So those type of clauses will be in place for your critical care. Okay. Okay. All right. Another Thank question behind you? So yeah. About um, the like life insurance and I guess some of the other um, things that the college nurses pay for. So is that up until we retire or can we get 
some of that or all of it or none of it. What happens with life insurance? Supplemental life insurance is yours. You pay for it and you're carry it before you into retirement. The basic life insurance with two times your salary is actually goes to retirement as well, but it reduces. So when you go to retire, it's two times your salary and retirement. It reduces 15% the first day you retire. Then it reduces another 15% for three more years. Then on the fourth year, it stops and stays at 25% of your face value. And that's the lowest it will ever go. And it will stay with you until there's no age cap on it or anything. I have retirees that are in their 90s. We're still paying health insurance. I mean, life insurance. Thank you. I have one more question. <laughs> Once you retire, can you pick up, because I know the federal government, you can pick up on your own the life insurance. Can you do it with? You no, you would have to have it prior to going out. That's the catch with retirement. You have to have what? Anything you retire with, you can keep. Oh. But anything you don't have, you cannot get afterwards. So if you retire with the spouse, the spouse can stay on. And if your spouse predeceases you, they would have one year pick up insurance outside of the college. And during that one year, they would have to pay 100% of the premium. Now, if there's situations where they're not Medicare age and they're trying to, we'll try to help them find their complaints. But we will not cancel them until we know that they have their coverage. But we do limit it. So if you single and after retirement, you senior, I have to be here. No, if you're single and you're retired, you keep your health insurance. Yeah, but what about the life insurance? Life insurance you keep too. But you have to pay it? Nope. The only thing you are liable to pay for as a retiree is your supplemental life insurance and your monthly premiums for your health insurance. Oh, okay. And as a retiree, when you turn 65, you have to pick a Medicare A and B. Mm -hmm. and you have to go into one of the Medicare Advantage places. Mm -hmm. That's the United yeah. Healthcare or the Kaiser. So once you turn 65, you have Care First, you will become an off Care First plan. We do not have a Medicare Advantage Care First plan. United, United Healthcare or Kaiser. Those are two plans offered after age 65 when you retire. As long as, as, long as you're actively working and age 65, you can stay on the plan. And these are all the things that we talk to you about when we go to retire. What if you retire before 65? You retire before you're 65, you stay on the plan that you're on. Your premiums go to the monthly premium. And when you prior to your 65th birthday, we'll do your verification of coverage. We'll have you enroll in your Medicare A and B, and we'll do your application for your Advantage plan. And we'll switch over. And one of the things that came up in the previous session was publishing the retiree benefits guide. Yes, yes. And Sabrina said she's going to do that. I think in Metalogic, but whatever. No, you can't put it in Metalogic. We'll put it in um, my PGC season under the benefits tag mm -hmm. with the rest of the benefits guys. Yeah. Oh, it's there. No, we, I can put it there. We don't have it there because only the retirees can look at it. And we issue it to people when they come to meet with us. We provide it to them. But I don't mean I can put it so it's there so anybody can look at it at any time. There's been a lot of interest. Uh, and, and I've learned a lot just from this session about anything. You have a retirement tab, and on the retirement tab, it has, and that's actually where I'll probably post it is on the retirement tab. But on the retirement tab, we have FAQs for these type of questions about premiums, the life insurance. We have a a um, post retirement guide out there talks about how the life insurance reduces and when it stops. It has a premium percentage spread for your health insurance. All right. Thank you. It's under the employee tab, but it's under the retirement tab under employees. So when you go into the benefits tab, you click on retirement, and that's where the information is. When we want to file options, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So when do we say where, where do you monitor it? I mean, where can you monitor the now? Okay, so now that's something that is not housed anywhere. So if you want to know how many credit hours you have that you have in there, just email me. Because that's something we're trying to implement into Colleen, but we don't know where we can out in Colleen. So we actually handle that outside of Colleen. What was the question? Where is faculty leave bank housed? 
Well, and maybe they should get some type of, I don't know, because the it's everybody and you don't want everybody's information out there. Where can we house it so that you can just keep that's that's what is hard. Challenge, that's the right, challenge. Yeah. That's the challenge. No, part time staff don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so let me say the usual faculty lead bank. <laughs> faculty lead bank is credit hours that you teach over your full load that instead of getting paid for, you bank them and you utilize them in a labor. So, with being a part time faculty, you wouldn't qualify for it because you don't have a full load. Mm -hmm. Yes. And does our um, where the employer cost in the middle and where you yeah, right there in the middle mm -hmm. where it says um chair first PPL family? Yep. Is this for the year? Yes, like, yeah. that's a lot. Yep, that's mm -hmm. so that's each of these, all of these numbers down here are for the year. Yeah. So I took these numbers and just multiplied them times the payments. Yeah. That's for the year. Yeah. The year. Yeah. 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 First of all, we have very rich benefits. Oh, if you ever look at our plans up against other institutions, we have very rich incomes. And then our percentage spread yeah. is great too. When are you eligible to put housing in years? And that we think you have to be here three years, right? Yes, three years. Just three only. Mm -hmm. yeah. So while they're working on that, so you can see the, uh, so what uh, we did was we did uh, our benefits at PGCC compared to those at Montgomery College. I don't know, Montgomery College had all of this available on their website. Um, and looking at, you can see that uh, the benefits, uh, all of the numbers for hours are higher. Right? And um, uh, in addition, they have to pay for parking. I don't know. We don't. Um, and uh, the one thing that uh, that Montgomery College offers that we don't is Montgomery College part-time faculty can get employee coverage, benefit uh, health benefits coverage at the same cost as full-time employees, which is a very nice benefit if you're uh, considering, especially considering how many part-time faculty have on this campus. Um, but uh, anyway, so and 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 again, we were getting information out there. And our goal is to um, is to get information out, take your feedback, and then work with Sabrina to get the best benefits package. And, and we've already got, I think, a very good one. And questions there? Part time. The pay benefits are full time. For a single employee. What what are the difference on those? I think they have. Kaiser and maybe oh, Aetna. Okay. I don't know, it's not Care First, but it was a similar system with the different name as far as I could tell. I don't you know. Yeah. Thank Question? The part time faculty member teaches and they're um, out of the country. They, they live out of the country. Can they get health benefits or is that just in America? That's a good question. Or Sabrina. I didn't hear it. What was it? If, if, a part -time, if a faculty member, I think, did you say part time? Yeah, part time. Part -time is out of the country. Living, oh, in, so a, part -time, living in a part time. Part time in, at PGCC gets no health benefits. Oh, I thought it said. That was my family. No, that was that's Justin McCombie. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Um, I should, I'm, I should say part -time. this is the Montgomery one. Only that's Montgomery. Only that's a mistake. In so you have to continue work full time. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is going to be in, but you're full time and you're overseas traveling. And you know, so do you have to buy the travel insurance from another agency or? No, you don't. 
So what we always recommend is contact the insurance company before you move, and they'll give you the steps of what you need to do. Sometimes they'll even give you the hospitals that's in the area. I did that when Dr. Bruce went over to um, Cuba. When she went to Cuba, we called Care First. Care First gave us a little hospital in the area, say, go here, go here, something happens. They need everything you need. Because anything that happens in the they just want to make sure that you're aware of where to go. Yeah. Yeah, they have networks that they connect with. We even had a retiree that would go to California. He was on high school. Go to California and stay in California three, four months at a time. And he would just, they, they had this thing called um, Away From Home, where, <laughs> yeah, visiting memories, yep, yeah, where you go over there and they treat you just like you're sitting right here. And you can utilize your place, just to say. But it's just for a window. So once he decided he wanted to move there, he had to pick up Kaiser's first out there in the mall. But, um, yeah. <laughs> call it Yeah. These are all great questions, and I'm learning a lot. Now. Hopefully, everybody is. Thank you for all your questions. Um, we'll pick, so, and we'll pick up where we left off. Uh, so, uh, again, in consultation and, and talking with Sabrina. Uh, one of my questions was, well, how do we even decide on this campus what benefits we have, right? Because you can see there are differences between campuses in percentages. And, and uh, it turns out that right now there is a request for proposal. You can go to this website. Um, and it has all of their RFPs for the entire campus. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's, a, it's a wormhole I went down with. I would all for a little while. But, uh, but uh, right now, uh, as of October 5th, they are uh, looking for uh, renewing or doing the benefits contracts for uh, basically all the important ones. Um, the, uh, these are generally on a five-year cycle, which is a three-year contract plus two uh, one-year renewals, um, should we choose to. Right? And then, um, but even though they're going out for contracts for these, um, Sabrina told me that Care First and Kaiser have been our two health benefit systems for the last 20 plus years. And then if we were to ever to look at changing from those, I think it's 95% of the doctors in uh, certainly care first have to be the same. Like there can't be huge changes in doctors. So anyway, there's a lot, of course, there's a lot that goes into these requests for proposals and, and any changes to benefits. I'll give you a prime example. I guess it was about uh, probably about 10 years ago. We did a bid in care first and not even care for neck and neck. But the difference in the cost savings was $500,000. There you go. And we were like, is it worth moving all the employees <laughs> from I one plan to another and disrupting for $500,000 savings? Which is so, out of what budget for that? Which is out of the. Um, uh, it's probably a it's probably a 10, mm -hmm. probably a 10 million dollars. And for the cost savings, it just wasn't worth it. It's just not worth the effort and the communication and work behind it for everyone to feel comfortable for five hundred thousand dollars. And that could change the next time around, too. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So are you saying we're looking at a new vision plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, possibly we haven't got the big track. Yeah, we have to, we have to, you know, because when we switched from um Spectera, which was a UHC plan before by them, to to the um IMED. Mm -hmm. IMED was a better plan, but the network is so different. Exactly. You're right. And I think that's that what like we have heard from the majority of the employees. I can't go to school no more. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the ones who use ribbon for work. So evidently, there's two major vision networks behind the scenes. 
and vision works is in one of them, and everybody else is in the other. Okay. But there are more vision works out here locally and convenient to the employees. And with our medical plan, you know, the vision care that you have is bundled with your care first plan. Oh. You can utilize that in vision work. So, what most people would do is they would use their plan there and get two pairs of glasses, one on each plan. You know, the, the care first one only gives you discounts, whereas the right. other plan gave you $120 at that time. So, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm, I'm really, that's, I'm really waiting on that. See who, who comes out because we had a pre big call and we had um, probably about five minutes. And I met his buck and trying to keep it. But you know, there's so many other ones out here that had broadened their, their network and everything. So we'll see. We'll see. We're going to go for the best, is, you know, to give the best. And having the complaints with the network, they would have to come in. I mean, Really, really, really very cheap. <laughs> and, and up some things and give you more for us to have more. So it has to really be beneficial to the employees. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So I know what I did. It's been all the universal now. Because you know you can use your eye right here at um um Lens Cracker. I don't live in. I'm but you can use it in any men's practice. You can yeah. use it in men's practice. They may go to the <laughs> University of Maui. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, that's what they need to go. So if you switch, then they're doing people's studies. So, okay. So now, whatever you have done may not necessarily all be vision insurance. Practice. Some of it could be medical. Because that's one thing about when it comes to your eyes. Everything does not fall in your vision insurance. If you have glaucoma or um, floaters or anything medically related to your eye, that's actually covered by the medical plan. The vision plan will scratch the surface on some of it, but they're going to ask you who's your medical plan. They're going to send you to somebody, this a specialist that will take your medical coverage. So that may be why they sent you the ophthalmologist mm -hmm. at the University of Maryland. That pay for parking downtown. So thank you. So the session is over. Also, um, I and this, this has been perfect. So, so let me just say, um, there's nothing hugely important for the rest of us. <laughs> what I want to say is, first of all, thank you for coming. Second of all, um, if you have any questions that uh, or feedback that you want to give our committee, Florida's committee, please email us. Um, uh, I'm Miller WW at the EDCC. Um, if you have questions, so uh, if you have questions or feedback uh, for Sabrina, so right now, the, I guess the last thing I'll say is, the, the decision makers for who our benefits will be moving forward are the benefits team, including Sabrina, and uh, from the finance perspective, uh, Terry Bucco Charles. Um, and so, again, we are trying to answer questions, improve what's going on here at PGCC. And we would love to have faculty yeah. and employee um, first yeah. uh, votes for what the benefits are. <laughs> We're working on it. But in the meantime, as you can see, Sabrina is very well connected. She she knew about the vision coverage issues. She seems to be the one to give uh, feedback to because we're right in the midst of this process right now. So October 5th, they went out, December 6th to 9th. And by February, they're going to have what our benefits are going to be for the next five years. And so this is where it's an important time. Uh, do I know if Sabrina will be in a part time session? I don't know, but hopefully. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, and if you have any questions, <laughs> <laughs>
Bill, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Bill, uh, uh, this is Malak, actually. Uh, is there any way you can put the barcode? Yeah, I can what? About on the the uh, barcode, uh, I'm actually following from the Zoom. Thank you, thank you. Got it.